So remember the movie Jerry Maguire, where Cuba Gooding is saying to uh, Tom Cruise, show me the money. Never mind the sunshine. Show me the money. So you should be saying, look, I'm busy. I'm a busy woman. I work. I work full time. I have a family. I have children. I am busy. Now you're telling me I need to put something else on my list of things to do. Show me the data. Next slide. So, there have been at least 12 studies that have been done that have looked at the relationship between regular exercise and risk of breast cancer. And at least 12 studies have shown that women who exercise regularly reduce their risk of breast cancer. These are six of the studies. On the left are the journals in which they were published. On the right are the institutions that conducted the research studies. God bless the Keck School in UCLA, they did three of these studies. And in the middle you see the number of women who were involved in the studies. There's one that involves about 1,100 women, but look at the other studies, 74,000, 41,000, 218,000, huge numbers of women. It's really incredible how many women will show up in the name of breast cancer. It really represents a standing army. I think Napoleon, in his dreams, could never have imagined such a standing army. Excellent. So let me discuss with you one study in particular. This was the E3N study that was conducted in France. Next slide. It was a cohort, which means it was a group of women. It was prospective, which means they followed them for a period of time. And it was a questionnaire. So women were given questionnaires, and then they were sent questionnaires every two years thereafter. They enrolled almost 91,000 women, most of the teachers. 77,000 women, 87%, filled out the seventh questionnaire. They were between 40 and 65 years old. They recruited almost 91,000 women in two years and they were followed for at least 10 years. Uh, so the results were that when they compared the women who had gotten breast cancer, a little over 3,400 women uh, came down with breast cancer during this period of time, when they compared them to the women who did not get breast cancer, what they discovered was that women who exercised had less of a chance of getting breast cancer. And the researchers concluded <clears throat> very strongly that exercise can prevent breast cancer, and they went on to say that women should know this, their physicians should know it, and those who are involved in public health care policy need to get that information out there. Next slide. So, the convergence of data, these thousands of women, multiple studies, have yielded the following results. Exercise can prevent breast cancer, in all ages, in all ethnic groups, and even in the presence of other risk factors. So you can say, oh, well, you know, my mother had breast cancer. Whatever. It's not going to help me. It does. Next slide. All age groups. Next slide. All ethnic groups. Next slide. And in the presence of other risk factors. This advertisement was taken from Lear's Magazine from 1991. Uh, during that time, hormone replacement therapy was thought to be the panacea, young forever. Didn't turn out to be that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a pretty strong risk factor for getting breast cancer. Next slide. I can't help but try and interject. I feel like I have a moral responsibility to remind you that cigarette smoking causes breast cancer and alcohol causes breast cancer. There's a linear relationship between the amount of alcohol you drink and the increased risk of breast cancer. Next slide. The average risk reduction if you exercise is about 30 to 40 percent. Next slide. And this is what 30 to 40 percent looks like if you graph it. So this on the left, pink bar on the left, would be your average risk, one in eight. And if you reduce the risk by 30 percent, you can see visually, if you reduce it by 40 percent, you can say. So if we have 1.3 million women who come down with breast cancer this year and you reduce that number by 30 percent,
percent, we have four hundred thousand fewer women in the present day. Excellent. The good news is that you don't have to sweat blood to get there. You have to exercise regularly. You don't have to kill yourself to do it. Excellent. What if you already have breast cancer? Has the train left the station and it's too late? No. Excellent. This is a study published by Harvard just recently. Nurses uh, with breast cancer uh, diagnosed between 1984 and 1998 and they were followed up to 2000. 2,900 nurses with breast cancer. Women who walked even one hour a week reduced their mortality rate by 20%. And if they walked between three and five hours a week, they cut their mortality in half. Now let me point out to you that chemotherapy, which costs $8,000, can improve your survival from breast cancer by about 25%. Herceptin can get you, if you're eligible for Herceptin, because not everyone is, uh, Herceptin can get you about a 30% improved overall survival. And that will cost you or somebody $50,000. A pair of tennis shoes that cost $100 that will last at least four years can cut your risk of death in half. Excellent. So, in conclusion, next slide. Exercise reduces your risk for breast cancer, regular exercise, and it improves your survival for breast cancer. You don't have to Kill yourself to do it, three to five hours a week of walking, and once you start doing that, you may find you want to lift some weights and maybe you want to swim. It's very invigorating actually to exercise. There's nothing not for the about the feeling. Next. So you could ask why? Why does exercise reduce the risk for breast cancer? And why and how does exercise improve survival of breast cancer? Well, I don't have the answers have some ideas, but I certainly would like to find answers for you and for other questions that I have. Next slide.